What's the best way to make a typical detached house greener, to save money and to help save the planet? Here's one family's experience with five practical technologies that work beautifully together. So the solar panels were put in 2010. Um, so they've been up um, for uh, nearly 12 years now. And uh, we're very, very happy with them. They produce a significant proportion of the energy that we use in the house. Uh, and as time has gone on and we've added other components like uh, um, battery storage, we have been able to use more and more of the energy that we actually produce. A couple of years ago, we also had some solar thermal panel installed and that directly produces or contributes to our um, the hot water that we use in the taps. Uh, and uh, that also ticks along in the background and we're very happy with the contribution that that makes. So this is where the house battery is and the control unit for that. Okay, so, so this battery stores uh, about 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So the battery uh, allows me to store surplus uh, solar energy that we don't use in the house immediately, but it also allows me to um, charge the battery overnight when the uh, electricity from the grid is four times cheaper than it is during the day. That, that means that I can charge the battery when it's cheap uh, and discharge the battery into the house um, during the day when the electricity is more expensive. On a, on a good day at the moment, uh, the battery would allow me to stay off grid until the middle of the afternoon or um, uh, sometime into the evening. If we've had a, a, a mild day and the heat pump is not using uh, much electricity um, and if as a bonus it's also been sunny, um, then that it allows us to stay off grid well into the evening. So the next component that we can look at is the heat pump. Uh, it replaces a previous gas boiler and uh, provides all of our space heating in the house. And it does that through the radiators that were installed and were linked to the previous gas boiler. Um, it runs 100% on electricity and because of the contract that I have with uh, Octopus Energy, it runs on uh, re renewable energy. So about half the uh, electricity use in the house is, is now directly goes into the, uh, goes into the heat pump. Um, some of that is provided from um, the solar panels. At other times, the power for the heat pump will be provided by the Tesla battery. Over Christmas, we had a, a, an elderly relative staying with us and she likes the temperature in the house to be a little bit warmer. So, um, it's, it's, so, so we were running the radiators in the house at 19 degrees uh, and even over Christmas when the temperatures were, were very much colder than they are now and it was, it was well below freezing, um, the heat pump had no trouble keeping the whole of the house uh, up to up to temperature. So um, we've we've been through um, three winters now, uh, and uh, I'm very confident that the heat pump is capable of of uh, delivering as much heat in the house as we as we need to keep ourselves warm and comfortable. Uh, so this is a electric Zoe that we've had for a couple of years. Uh, it's our first electric car. Um, we got it quite cheaply because it does. Uh, it's got quite low range on it, um, but we use it for 95, 90, you know, almost 100% of our journeys. Everything relatively local we can do in the Zoe. About 20% of our electricity consumption is used in the car. Some of that comes from the solar, and some of that comes from the Tesla battery. Uh, but actually, most of that comes from the grid because it's much cheaper to charge the car overnight when the grid electricity is cheapest. Very economical. It's uh, one of my favorite components of the energy system. Uh, and uh, yeah, we love driving it. So how well do each of these technical solutions work together? The solar panels, the solar thermal panels for hot water, the electricity storage battery, the heat pump, and the electric car. So all, all the components that we have uh, that we've looked at are, are part of an integrated whole. Really, they, they are all components of the system that allows us to minimise our carbon footprint and manage our use of energy. Um, all, all of which is done through um, apps that I have on my on my phone for the Tesla battery, which shows me what is being produced uh, and what's currently stored in the battery. Um, and what's being used in the house. 
and this shows that the battery was fully charged overnight using cheap electricity. It then discharged until the middle of the day when it was sunny enough to recharge the battery back up to 100% and then the battery discharged from there for the rest of the day. So, so on this day, this graph shows us that we were connected to the grid overnight and we uh, imported electricity from the grid between half past 12 and half past four in the morning. But for the rest of the day, we used no grid electricity at all. Uh, and uh, being off grid for such a significant proportion of the time, especially during the winter, um, is very satisfying. So in summary, 30% of the electricity is coming from solar. 50% is coming from the grid at a cheap rate, often via the battery, and only 20% is full price grid. And what does that mean for the electricity bills? And comparing the annual total cost with an old style, all grid system, the saving is striking. Um, it's very satisfying, both from a uh, cost perspective uh, but also from a carbon footprint perspective and it demonstrates on a fairly small scale um, how much difference we can all make personally uh, to reducing the carbon footprint of our whole society.